Hello, hello. Hey guys, welcome to Thursday's Forum Foundations. Um, my name is Nilma, and we are going to um, be using some dumbbells today. So if you don't have any dumbbells, you can grab whatever you have that you wanna use, kettlebells work as well, or anything else you have. Um, so dumbbells, go ahead and grab a mat, go ahead and grab some water. Um, and that is it. Um, if you want to grab um, like dumbbell size weight wise, you can use um, anything that's from light to medium. Um, and if you feel like you're really strong in a movement, then you can go ahead and go a little bit heavier, right? But I like to always kind of focus on a lot of the technique. So let's definitely um, stick to like a medium range if you can. Thank you, Courtney. That's so sweet. Thank you so much. Um, all right, so here we go. We are gonna go ahead and get started with our warm up. Let's go ahead and warm up our neck, okay? So we're gonna stay in this tall position. I want you to point your fingers down to the ground. And again, like always, when we're doing our warm up, I want you to kind of think about your intention, okay? So tuck that chin in, rotate to the side. I was just telling a client earlier today that for a lot of my classes, we set intentions and I was telling her that lately, I've noticed that sometimes after some classes, I tend to kind of go into some of those bad movement patterns for myself because I think I get focused on trying to teach it and it's hard to focus on like what you're doing at the same time and she's a yoga instructor so she said she feels the same way sometimes in her classes so I was telling her that one thing that I like to do now is set an intention for myself to really focus on specific movements that I know um, certain things take over or certain like tweaks happen Let's do that one more time on the other side, okay? Pull those shoulders way down. Rotate to the side. Tuck that chin in. Nice. Go ahead and bring your hands together. All right, you're gonna tuck that rib in. Uh, hips are gonna be squared out, shoulders are down. You're going to almost like rub against your opposite, the inside of your opposite arm. Open it up. Open up that chest. So you're going into your thoracic spine rotation. Let's do the other side. So rub, rotate, rotate, rotate. Open up that chest. So the chest is basically starting to follow that hand. Back in. and relax. All right, let's go into some arm circles to kind of get the shoulders moving a little bit. So what you're gonna do, actually, sorry, before the arm circles, we're gonna go into some bend slingers to get the shoulder blades to move into protraction and retraction, okay? So you're here, again, Pick that tailbone under, pull those shoulder blades away from each other. You're still down and back, and pull them together. Proud chest. Proud chest. Last one. Relax. All right, we're actually gonna get on all fours to get a little bit of hip mobility in. So go ahead and get on all fours, just like this, all right? So keep your hands a little bit underneath you, okay? Especially if you have a tendency to shrug. You're here, rib is down towards the belly button. You're gonna pull that 
knee inward towards your hand. Now you're gonna bring it out to the side. So bring it to the middle, bring it to the side. Rotate that hip, bring it in, back in. Reverse that, now you're gonna push it back. So you're doing rotations pretty much. Out, so knee comes out towards the ground, or towards the, towards the, the camera basically. And now back in towards the floor. Again, knee comes out towards the camera. Rotate it, bring it down, bring it down to the floor. And one more time. The purpose of this is to try to get the least amount of um, movement in the hips or in the low back and try to really just get the movement in the hip joint, okay? Let's go ahead and do the other side. Here we go. Out. Rotate it in and towards the ground. Back in. Up. Out. In. Last one. guys we are gonna go ahead and start with some we're actually gonna warm up our hips first so if you have something that you can elevate on like a couch or like a stool or anything like that that would be preferred if you don't then you can simply do this on the ground as well we're basically just gonna warm up our glutes um, by going into some bridges or some hip thrusts okay so let's go ahead and go into this Mid back is on the edge of the bench or couch or whatever you have. Walk your feet in a little bit so they're not super, super far away from you, okay? Let's really focus on that rib. Pull that rib down, okay? Keep that rib down, squeeze your butt, drive that hip up. One. Two, rib down. Three, four, five, six. If you feel like your neck is straining, pull the shoulders away. Get the lats involved. Seven. Eight. Nine, ten, five more, four, three, two more, two, last one, relax. All right, you should feel a little bit activated here. Um, all right, we're gonna go ahead and go into some rows and then we'll, we'll kind of move on with that, okay? Again, if you have any questions in the middle of the workout or anything like that, something feels funky or whatever, just message on here and I will answer you. All right, we're gonna go into single arm for this, okay? So I'm gonna show you a few different techniques with these. We've done these multiple times if you've taken any of my classes, but I always like to teach different cues to see if it works for your body. So you're gonna grab on to your dumbbell, okay? You're gonna pull that dumbbell back a little bit versus forward, okay? So pull it, pull that shoulder down and back and pull that dumbbell back. The reason we're doing that is because we're trying to keep this back nice, tight, and strong throughout the whole movement, okay? The opposite hand, you can keep that tight as well. Pretend like you're holding a dumbbell, but you're really not. So here, okay? So what I want you to do before you even start hinging, because we're gonna go into a hinge and then we're gonna go into a row. I want you to think pulling the shoulders down and back and I want you to start 
contracting your back, okay? So like mentally think about contracting those lats. Everything is tight. You're gonna slightly arch that back, very, very slightly, okay? Because when you go down, it's not gonna be arched anymore, okay? Only reason we're arching it in the beginning is to help you get that back activated and tight, okay? So here we go, get it nice and tight. Now start shifting your hip back. Pull that hip back, you see how this is still where it's at. Nice and tight, shoulder is down and back. Stay here, pull with that shoulder blade. One. Two. Three. Four. Stand back up. Oh, thank you, Henley. I it's I guess it's the birthday hair. I washed my hair this morning. And um, usually I don't keep it naturally curly because I tend to find it takes a lot of effort um, to keep it that way. And I don't like to wash my hair a lot throughout the week. So um, yeah, I decided I needed to wash it today. And because it's summer and it's warm outside, I usually like to keep it curly in the summer because it dries quicker. All right, here we go. We're gonna do the other side, you guys. Same thing, right? Pull that shoulder back, contract that back, just like that, arch that back. Push that hip back, keep this where it's at. Keep pushing that hip back, keep pushing it back, keep pushing it back, just like that. Keep that tension in your hamstrings and pull, pull back. Last one here. And stand up. Yay. All right, so that's gonna be our first movement. We'll definitely do more of these. Um, Courtney, I hope you are finding this, um, this new cue valuable um, when it comes to trying to activate your lat and not your back taking over, I hope. So let me know if it is or not and anybody else as well, okay? All right, the next movement we're gonna do is we're gonna be on the floor, we're gonna go into a dead butt position and some tricep extensions, okay? Sorry, I'm just grabbing another dumbbell. So you will need two dumbbells for this. Now, if you don't have two dumbbells, that's perfectly fine. You can just use one. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna, these are called rolling tricep extensions in the dead butt position. See if I can move this down. I hope you guys can see me. Here we go. So we're gonna be here on the floor. Grab whatever size weight you want. You may wanna start a little bit lighter here, okay? So you don't put too much stress on that shoulder joint. You wanna go into your dead bug position, which is here, legs are at that 90 degree. Toes, uh, uh, feet are about dor our dorsiflex. So they're towards you. Now the key to this movement is keeping that rib down. So rib is here, pull it down towards that belly button, okay? That's gonna really contract that core and it's gonna keep your low back from arching, okay? So here, just like that, pull these right over you. Shoulders are down and back, just like that and slightly shift your arms, keeping everything contracted, elbows are tucked in. All you're doing is you're rolling these down, elbows stay where they're at, you're, they're just bending. And bring it back up. Again, keep that core tight. Back up. Shoulders are down. So we're we'll kind of working core and with this movement. Two more. Last one. Eight. 
Now, if you want a little more of a challenge here and you want to add a little something extra, what you can do is you can go into your tricep extension while you extend the opposite leg. So that's a variation you can try, okay? So it'll fire up the core a little bit more, um, but you will need a little more stability, okay? So if you feel like you want a little more, you, if you feel like you don't have enough stability, I would just stick to the legs bent and just dropping the heel down to the ground, okay? Um, let's go ahead and go into our third movement, which is just a good old plank. So it's gonna be a forearm plank. Start with your shoulders away from your ears. You're gonna come onto your tippy toes. You're gonna bring that rib down towards the belly button and you're gonna contract your legs, okay? Um, I know a lot of times people are like, oh, contract your glutes. When you contract your glutes, people tend to find that their hips end up sagging and their low back takes over. So instead, I want you to focus on keep the hip up, rib towards the belly button, and contract the legs, okay? So lengthen with the legs. Here you go, here we go. So then your back should be nice and straight, okay? Um, hip is up just a little bit. Relax, yay. Here we go. We're gonna repeat that another time, okay? So we're gonna kinda go through this again, but take your time. Remember, no rush here. We're all about technique versus speeding through this movement, okay? Sing along. Go to that hinge, to that row. Focus on the lats, so shoulders are down and back. Pull this dumbbell back, keep it there. Everything is nice and tense. Let the pelvis go a little, so arch that back just a little bit. Push that hip back. Like that, and pull. Last one, hold, five, four, three, two, one. Switch sides, and again, shoulders down and back. Pull this guy all the way back, get this activated, not up here, more so down here. Arch that back a little, get the lats activated, nice and tight, push that hip back. Bend at the hip. Oops. Sorry, dropped my headphones. Earbud came off. Hello? I hope you can hear me. Okay. And rope. Two more. Relax. Let's go into those rolling tricep extension, dead bug tricep extensions. On the floor. Bug position, rib is down. Two, 
keep that tension in those triceps. Keep that tension in that core. All right, let's go into our plank. Find your strong plank position. Relax. Go ahead and take your water break. Take a breather. Connect back with your breath. And we're gonna repeat that one more time. We have a guest in the background today. That is my husband, everybody. I'm about to say hi. <laughs> I, um, I like to do it this way now because um, the lighting is so much better versus when I'm the opposite way and then the lighting is coming from the back and I feel like I'm just a shadow. So here we go. We're gonna do that again whenever you're ready. I'm gonna give you guys a few more seconds. To those deadlifts, those single arm um, rows. Here we go. Again, shoulders down and back. Get the lats activated. Feel for that down here. Okay. Shoulders down and back. Get the lats activated. Arch that back just a little bit. Shoulders are pushed down. Nice, strong position. Pull. Last one and hold. Five, four, three, two, one. Switch sides. Here we go. Shoulders down and back. Pull everything. Tighten everything up. And go into your hands. And relax. Whew. Let's go down onto the floor and go into those dead bug extensions. Here we go. dead bug position. Really focus on keeping that rib down as you extend. Half 
for you there. Ooh, I'm shaking. Two more. And relax. Whew. I swear, my core was shaking. I was trying so hard to keep the rib down. And last movement for this round, you guys, is our plank. Again, if you feel like in a plank, your back takes over, adjust your rib down towards that belly and slightly shift that hip up a little, okay? While keeping that rib down. So not like a, not like a pelvic tilt, but keep that rib down and then shift the hip up, okay? That will help eliminate some of that back that takes over in a plank sometimes. So here we go in five, four, three, two, one. Go ahead and grab your water. Go ahead and take your rest. Um, go ahead and reconnect with Rest and recover. Let's take 30 more seconds and then I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the next movement, okay? All right, so the next movement we're gonna do is called a dumbbell suitcase deadlift, but there's two variations, okay? You can either do just a swing where you're pressing the dumbbell right into your torso, just like this. You're pushing that hip back. So when you're pressing it into that torso, your back needs to be nice and tight. Push that hip back and keep it dynamic. One, two. So you're really driving with the hamstrings and the glutes to drive that hip forward, okay? So that's one variation. The next one can be so this, so you're here, push it back. You see how my arms stay back? So this one's a little more advanced because it's gonna require some upper body control as well, okay? So it's up to you which one you wanna do. I may do both variations and you can do the same as as me if you want, okay? So let's go ahead and do that and then we'll go into the next movement. So we're gonna go for about eight to 10, lots of tension, lots of control here, lots of power, okay? So here we go. Push that dumbbell into that lower part of your sternum. Shoulders are down and back. Everything is nice and tight. Let that pelvis go just a little bit. So you're a little hinge, hinge back. So load, drive. Breathe in, breathe out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two more. Nine, Ooh, last one, 10. Nice job. All right, let's go into the second movement. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what we're gonna do. You have a few options here. 
If you like being on a single leg position, you can do that for this movement. If you don't, all you're gonna do is you're gonna go into something called a kickstand right here. Kickstand meaning you wanna be tall on that back toe, okay? Get really, really tall. That's gonna work some of those oblique muscles as well. Um, a lot of the weight is gonna be on that opposite leg, opposite foot that's back, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push that hip back. So you can either go into a kickstand squat and then go into your tricep extension, okay? Or you can go into a hinge row tricep extension. It's up to you, whatever you like the best, okay? Now, if you don't like this kickstand and you feel like it's hurting the back toe, if you're putting too much pressure on it, try to shift that body weight forward a little into that front foot, okay? So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and go into that kickstand position. Three, two, one. Get into whichever position, hinge or the squat, whatever you like, pull and kick back. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So tight. Kick stand, hinge your squat. Kick back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Relax. Yay. Next movement, we don't need the dumbbell. We're gonna go into some push-ups. Um, it's gonna kind of work with the plank we just did, right? Same position, except plank we were on with that, with that version of the plank we were on our forearms. This we're gonna be on our hands. Um, well, I want you to think you're using a lot of hands, okay? Think what we do with our feet. Right, we grip that ground. So I want you to rotate, grip that um, ground with your hands, okay? Don't just keep them loose because this is gonna bring you a lot of power and stability here in the shoulder joint. Um, if you want to be elevated, perfectly fine to elevate and just work on the mechanics of what the shoulder blades want need to do, okay? Um, if you want to be on your knees and elevated, perfectly fine. If you want to be on your toes and elevated and go into the push-up perfectly fine and if you want to be on the floor that's perfectly fine all right the mechanics is still going to be the same we're going to pull those shoulders down and back let them rotate pivot off the toes keep the core tight all right so here we go i'll probably do it on the floor go ahead and move this down Again, if you are a shrugger, like my left side, um, focus on pulling the shoulders down as you're rotating or as you're um, going into your push-up, okay? As you're pivoting off the toes. Let me move this side so you guys can see me a little bit better. So you see how I'm using my hands, really gripping. Shoulders are down and away from my neck. Step back, so nice strong plank position, pivot off the toes, slightly come forward and back up. And relax. Really for these, I don't like to give people a number um, you do as many as you are able to do um, confidently um, with good foundational form and um, where you feel the best. Um, it's not about the reps with push-ups. It's about technique in my opinion because it should be working your entire body, stability, everything, if you do it nice and controlled, okay? 
All right, so we are gonna go ahead and redo that entire movement. Um, um, we're gonna go ahead and do that entire circuit again. <clears throat> um, this time I may do not a single dumbbell for the uh, suitcase, for the deadlift swings. Uh, I probably do both dumbbells, but I'm gonna try to keep this nice and strong. So as I hinge back and as I'm swinging, I'm not just like a noodle, okay? Pull this up. All right, in 10 seconds. Five, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Go into those um, kickstand tricep kick back. Here we go. One, eight, eight on this side, okay? And then we're gonna switch two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Relax. Get rid of the dumbbells. And then go into those push ups. Give yourself a minute. Grab your water if you need to. Take a break if you need to. Remember with these, we're working on technique, not reps. So work to the number that works best for you, okay? Elevate yourself if you need to. Keep your knees down if you need to. Focus on the shoulders and the core specifically though, okay? That's what we're working on today. Here we go. In five and four. I swear, these take a lot out of me. It's like, I'm so out of breath after these. Go ahead and rest and recover. Get reconnected with your breath. Because we're gonna do that one more time. Yay! Give yourself 10 more seconds, and we are gonna repeat those deadlift swings again, all right? In 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Again, you can do it to where you're putting that dumbbell right underneath your sternum, hinging, loading, swinging, or you can do both arms in the suitcase style, like you're holding two suitcases, nice and tight, just like that, and go into that, okay? So it's up to you, whichever method you prefer. I think I'm gonna do it with both for this round. Here we go, five, four, three, two, one, Load, swing, two, three, Ooh, lots of balance, three, four, five, six, seven, 
seven, eight, nine, ten. Hang on to those dumbbells. We're gonna go into those kickstand deadlift, or kickstand tricep extension. Here we go. In five, four, three, two. dumbbells and we're gonna go right into our last movement which is our push-up here we go go ahead and gather your breath if you need to Good. Go ahead and check your breath. Nice and calm. We're gonna go ahead and start going into our cool down. I'm gonna start with some neck rotations because I know sometimes those push-ups can aggravate some of our neck muscles, upper trap muscles. So what we're gonna do Gonna be here you can stay on your knees or you can be up standing whichever you prefer we're gonna go into some rotation side to side so i want you to just pull those shoulders away down away from the ears i want you to look to your left or to your right sorry <laughs> to your right hold that position tuck your chin in if you need to if that feels good on that side if it doesn't, then just hang out here, bring it back to the center. Again, pull down, rotate to the other side. Breathe. Don't forget that diaphragmatic breathing always. Back to the middle. Okay, what we're gonna do is you're gonna grab one side of your neck nice and gentle you're gonna slightly pull it and you're gonna slightly tuck your chin in hang into this position for just a second pull that shoulder down and back at the same time okay breathe switch sides pull slightly pull tuck Breathe. Okay, let's go into those hip rotations real quick. So 90-90 position, just like this. If you've taken some of my classes, you know we do a lot of these, okay? So you should be familiar with it. Nice tall torso here. Push your hands back, just like this lift the out 
upside knee up first. Feet are, heels are glued to the ground. Opposite knee follows. Drop. Just like that. And again. Lift. Feet are glued to the ground. Drop. Just like that. Getting some internal external rotation of that hip joint. Two more times, and then we're going to go into our diaphragmatic breathing. Remember, keep this torso tall. Last one on each side. And lay on the ground. We're going to take about one whole minute to breathe. Put your hand on your belly. Reconnect with your intention at this moment. Reconnect with your breath. Be proud of yourself for getting a workout complete first thing in the morning if, if you just woke up. And if you didn't wake up then, what a great start to your day right now. Take a deep in. And remember, breathe out, pull that pelvic floor in. your eyes. You can hang out here if you want to continue taking a few more moments to breathe or you can go ahead and get started with the rest of your day. It is up to you. I hope you guys had a wonderful workout. I hope you loved all the movements. I hope they felt good and I hope they were joyful movements for you. Um, I wish you a really amazing rest of your day, rest of your weekend. Um, I will be here next Thursday. And yeah, I hope you guys have a good weekend. Bye.